Well, there's one more thing we need to do to the plane before we fly, and that's to make sure that the ailerons are uh, are in neutral position and that they uh, move in equal opposite directions to each other. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that with your radio on, battery in, um, that everything on your transmitter is set to zero. So you can see it without being in the light here. You want to make sure that this is in the center and that there, if there's any inputs uh, in the settings that they're in the center position. And then you also want to make sure that your ailerons are centered in the wing. And as you can see here, this one with everything neutral, this aileron is off. So what we'll need to do is we need to go to this clevis pin and take it out and um, move the clevis pin either in or out to make sure that the aileron is centered. So we'll go ahead and uh, and let's just try this and see if we can't uh, get our aileron to center. Once you get it centered, and you've got to be very careful, this is a little tiny pin right here, and it's real easy to break. And uh, put your clevis pin back in, and then check your aileron again. And here we're down just a hair, so let's go ahead and move it out one more turn. We went ahead, and uh, we went ahead and moved it out one more turn and now the aileron is flush with the uh, trailing edge of the wing so go ahead now and there's a little tiny, tiny nylon tube uh, silicon nylon tube that locks the clevis pin into place and we're uh, even with the uh, trailing edge of the wing here so go ahead now go back to your radio and move your ailerons back and forth make sure that they're centering okay this wing over here is uh, good and this wing over here is good so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the ailerons to make sure that they have equal amount of throw in uh, both directions alright with the uh, aileron centered next thing you want to do is uh, check the throw of your ailerons in the up position and in the down position and uh, you want to make sure that both sides are equal in their throw and you don't want the max amount of throw on, on the ailerons. You, I usually do about 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter and let's go ahead and check and see how these go. I kind of did some initial settings uh, but you definitely want to fine tune it so in the up position we'll do a test here and I just lay my ruler right where the uh, aileron and the tip of the wing are and I come up with 10 millimeters in the up position on this one and then you want to do it in the down position and then you want to go underneath the wing and I know this is going to be hot, you won't be able to see it but you want to do the same thing, lay the uh, ruler on the uh, trailing edge and check your aileron throw and make sure that it's the same and I come up with 10 millimeters in the down position as well. Now, if they're off, most better radios, tra uh, transmitters, have the ability to adjust the, uh, the aileron movement independently. Now, I have this plane set up for flaperons, which means one aileron is on one channel and the other one is on another, and that gives me the ability to adjust each aileron independently and most of the better radios will allow you to, to adjust them independently. So once you get one side set, then you want to take and you want to go to your opposite aileron and do the exact same thing and um, test in the up and the down position to make sure that they're both equal and that both sides are equal and then the other thing I do just to make sure is um, I'll put on the flaperons and then I will go underneath again and do the same thing. I'll take the ruler, 
I'll slide it up underneath the wing and I'll test it just to make sure that this aileron is down in the same position as this aileron because if they're off by even one or two millimeters <clears throat> the plane will pull uh, to one side or the other and when you're coming in for a landing the last thing you want to do is uh, fight that as the planes pull into one side or another and you're trying to come in for a landing and you're lowering throttle um, if you're not paying attention you could do a tip stall, a wing stall, the, the wing will fall to one side or the other and it could fall out of the sky and at three or four feet it's not very pretty so go in and make sure that this aileron is in the right position and that uh, the far side is in the right position once that's done then this plane is uh, the ailerons are set up and that's ready to go and then there's just one other thing you can do and it's not critical but uh, I do it and that is making sure that your rudder has um, let's see if I can get this in here tip it up you want to make sure that your rudder has the same amount of throw to the left and the right. Although this isn't very critical, it just makes it, you know, when you uh, when you go into a turn and you use your rudder, um, it doesn't turn harder to one direction than it does the other. So it only takes a couple seconds to make sure that uh, your rudder is uh, centered and it throws in both directions. Elevator is uh, not critical at all because you rarely use elevator in its full up or down position unless you're doing some type of uh, 3D stunt. So, but uh, rudder and aileron, and then once you get uh, better in flying, you can couple them together with a mix, and you can do what they call coordinated turns, and that's taking the uh, the rudder and the ailerons. Try and get in position here for you. You can take the rudder and the ailerons and couple them together and when you turn the plane you can see both ailerons and, and rudder are coupled together and they call that a coordinated turn and what that does is it just uh, helps pull the tail of the plane through the turn and just makes for a much nicer uh, much, much nicer turn. So this plane's ready for a maiden fly we're just waiting for weather.